Uh, welcome to the first lecture of the course computational complexity. Right. So, so let's let me just uh, go through the uh, some parts that I had already covered in the introduction video that you must have seen on the Swayam portal. And um, so I'll explain very briefly what is the scope of the course and what we set out to do uh, during the uh, the next 12 weeks, right? So the basic goal of this course is to set up a framework to understand the power of computation, right? As I had said in the introduction video, uh, there are many computations that we perform ourselves using our brain, right? But uh, the scope of the course is uh, to um, to set up a set up a model of compute or set up several models of computation and see what can these models of computation achieve. So uh, that is even though we will see abstract models, the overall go goal is to understand what can computers compute, right? So I mentioned several of these problems, like what is the shortest path from one city to another, right? How do you add two n-digit numbers? How do you multiply two n-digit numbers? So you may know that or you may guess by just by practice of adding and multiplying numbers that multiplying seems to be a harder problem than adding two numbers, right? You, you have more things to compute, more uh, digit wise products to compute, more additions to perform. So multiplying, multiplication seems a harder problem. But then how do you formalize that, right? Uh, another problem is given a graph, can it be colored using two colors? So this, this, this tree in the, in the, in the right, left hand side can be colored using two colors, right? Whereas this five cycle in the right hand side, the pentagon shaped graph uh, is not, we cannot color using two colors. We need red, R stands for red and blue, B stands for blue. In addition to red and blue, we also need a third color green, right? So now, uh, so now if I, if I give you a graph and ask you, can it be colored using three colors? So when, okay, by the way, when I say colored meaning, colored in such a way that no two neighbors share the, uh, have the same color. So if you, so now uh, this vertex, the top vertex red and the bottom left vertex red is okay because um, these two are not connected by an edge, directly connected by an edge. So these two reds are okay, these two blues are okay. But then this red cannot be the same as, uh, this, this red and this blue have to be two different colors. So once we color this red, blue, blue, red, these four vertices, now this vertex cannot get red or blue because one neighbor is red and another neighbor is blue, right? So now, so these are problems, computational problems. Given a graph, can it be colored using two colors? Can it be colored using three colors? So now one of them turns out to be easy and one of them turns out to be harder, right? So why is one easy and why is one harder? So we will try to explore these questions during the uh, co uh, during this course, right? So the overall, what I can say is we will look at various computational problems and classify them into what is called complexity classes, right? So we will have several complexity classes that we will see and, and different models of computation also. So based on a certain model of computation, we will, we will arrive at several different complexity classes. Based on some other model of computation, we will arrive at some other co complexity classes. Sometimes we will see, we will we will also try to see how these classes relate to each other. Does this class contain this class? Does this class uh, like is a subset of this class or a superset of this class? Are they do are these two classes disjoint? Like no problem can be in this as well as that. So the the goal is to understand what computers can perform. So to to to. To formally understand this, we will take the help of these things called uh, complexity classes, right? Um, so, and this course uh, is a is perhaps one maybe the first uh, graduate level course. If you are interested in uh, computational complexity as a research area, it's a vast research area with lots of exciting work happening. Uh, it's a, it's um, people started thinking about it during the 70s, picked up during the 80s, and people have been. It has been taking uh, various paths and various directions throughout the last uh, 30 or 40 or 50 or uh, years. So it's an exciting research area and if you like to uh, understand this research area and start to like to get started on this area, this uh, course would be very good, um, would be appropriate for you to uh, get started on it. So it's, it's, it's like an introductory graduate level course, uh, graduate level in a sense, it's a 
not an undergraduate it's a pg level course right so so the most basic uh, model of computation that you would uh, that um, that are used commonly to to model computers are what are called turing machines this was developed by alan turing in in 1930s um, and um, he was a british scientist uh, and uh, and and uh, we will see the turing machine model and the two main resources that uh, that that pertain to the turing machine model of computation are time and space if you have taken an algorithms class uh, I, I hope most of you have taken an algorithms uh, course uh, during um, or, or at least watched an NPTEL video of an algorithms course you would have uh, come across the notion of uh, time time complexity like this algorithm sorting takes n log n time right whereas bubble sort some other sort takes n square time so we already have this notion of time complexity so um, you, you might have already been familiar with this uh, what we will uh, another uh, equally important uh, resource that we would also study is the space how much space does a certain computation take even uh, this also you may have seen you might have seen how much extra memory does a certain computation use right so we'll see all this more formally right uh, one of the most famous problems in computational complexity or even all of computer science is the p versus np problem so we will see this also during this course like we will, will so you may also have heard p versus np maybe you don't know what it is maybe you know very superficially but we will very formally uh, have a good understanding of what p versus np is so that uh, uh, when somebody comes along and asks you what it is as computer scientists you can explain what is p versus np problem right so we'll start with the turing machine model of computation uh, soon we will uh, see other models of computation also like randomized computation where uh, we also use random bits we will also see uh, circuits which is another very very important model of computation where we don't have a turing machine with a tape and heads moving and all that but instead you have gates logic gates boolean gates that make the computation uh, there are also other paradigms of computing like interactive computation we will see some of that and pertaining to uh, corresponding to each of these models randomized circuits for interactive computation we will see different uh, complexity classes right so in randomized computation for instance bits the number of random bits is a resource in circuits um, uh, the resources that people bother about are number of gates size of the circuit and something called depth of the circuit and and so on so there are pertaining to each of these uh, computational models there are different resources of interest and computational complexity classes of based on how much resources uh, is taken to achieve a certain computation or to solve a certain computation problem will be studied right uh, as indicated in the in the swayam portal the the prerequisite one uh, of the course is theory of computation i hope most of you have taken a uh, theory of computation course or at least uh, see, see, uh, gone through uh, the materials of a theory of computation course and and are familiar with it uh, a good um, indication would be uh, try to solve the assignment zero and see how comfortable you are with the concepts right uh, if you are familiar with the concept uh, of, of uh, with introduction to algorithms and have done an undergraduate algorithms course like basic algorithms course that would also be very good uh, but i'm not insisting on that you can you can pick that up uh, along the way right the course plan is there in the swayam portal uh, you can go through the swayam portal there is a course plan already there and let me just uh, say that it may we may modify it slightly as we go along because we are just beginning the course so perhaps we may end up spending a bit more time on some topics or a bit less time on some topics or some slight reconfiguration may happen may happen so maybe it's possible that some topic gets dropped or some uh, but largely we will stick to that okay so with that out of the way uh, let me go to the first uh, point, part of the course which is the which is a um, turing machine model right again if you have seen the uh, uh, theory of computation course you would have seen the turing machine model but let me just very uh, briefly uh, recap some of the topics that are important and and perhaps it's it's, it's good to re, uh, revise right okay so turing machine um, 
contains a, a state control. So this is the state control. This is the brain of the Turing machine. This, this is the state control. Right. And this state control, uh, and, and then there are three, uh, or not three, in this picture there are three, but there are K tapes. Uh, there are K tapes, right? In this picture there are three tapes, but there could be K tapes where K is some finite number. It could be one. It could be more than one also. In this picture, there are three. And there are tape heads that read the tapes. And these tapes are usually, uh, they are infinite and we are we have depicted them as infinite to one side. So, they will start, there is a left end point, but then from there it is infinite tapes, right. And um, what happens is, these heads read something from the, the uh, these tapes, right. So, here uh, and then they, they they will be in a certain state. So, they could be in a state called let us say Q5 and here they read a 0, here they read it. okay, so I have not seen shown it properly. So, so let us say here they read a 1 and here they read let us say 5, right. So, if you are at Q5 and you read a 0, 1 and 5, maybe the instruction is that you move the first one to the to the right, to the left let us say. So, I am putting it in dotted line, the, the, the second tape to the right let us say and the third tape to the right let us say and in from Q5 you move to let us say Q3. So, this could be a move. So, th and this would be depicted like delta which is a, the, the um, which is a symbol for the transition function uh, Q5, 0, 1, 5, so which means it you are at Q5 state, 0 is a, uh, 0, 1, 5 is what you read is equal to equal to Q3, right. So, in addition, the, it can also do one more thing, it could, it could modify the tape content. So, maybe 0 was modified to let us say 3, 1 was modified to uh, 4 and let us say 5 was uh, modified or not modified, let us say it, re it remains 5. So, you will say, so first you would say, uh, uh, the first tape head moves left, sorry, first tape head moves left, second tape head moves right and the third tape head moves right. Uh, I am sorry, I think we, we denote it like a bit differently. You first write what you 3, 4, 5 because that is what you write on the tape heads 3, 4 and 5 and then left, right and right. right? So, this is how you depict the uh, movement of the Turing machine. So, this is, so there is something called uh, states. So, the set of states is called Q. There is a tape alphabet, gamma, alphabet, gamma, sigma is the input alphabet and sigma must necessarily be contained in gamma. So, you could use some extra symbols for computation to be written on the tape and delta is a transition function. Then there are special states called, uh, sorry, this has to be pushed down. There are special states called Q0 or sometimes it is called Q start, uh, which is the starting state, then Q accept, which is the accepting state, and Q reject, it is the rejecting state. So, what we will initially see is what is called. Uh, decision problem. So, you will ha you have to decide. So, like we saw here, um, is this graph colorable using three colors? So, that is a yes or no question. These things are called decision problems, right. Uh, so, like multiplying two numbers is also a computational problem, but that is not a yes or no problem. It is a problem whose answer is a another number, right. So, we will mostly initially we will look at decision problems, okay. So, which means we, we, we give something 
be given input and then the machine has to decide yes or no. So that's why we have accept and reject states. So the machine once it enters the accept or reject state, it, it stops the computation. Sure. So this is very briefly uh, the, the overview of a Turing machine. It's a very quick recap. So for more details, please uh, revise the theory of computation part. And we have uh, one other thing called configuration. Right. So this is a snapshot of the Turing machine. So if somebody has to continue the computation from where uh, one uh, where we, le we leave the computation, let's say we, we temporarily stop the computation. Let's say I am running the computation and I want you to continue the computation from where I left. So what information should I convey to you so that you can continue the computation? Right. So you can think of it as a board game. Let's say uh, let's say we, we both are playing a board game. Now, let's say, uh, let's say we are playing, for instance, chess, right? So we both, but then due to whatever reason, we have to stop this game now and we will, we will decide to resume the game at a later date. But then you don't want to keep the chess board open at your home like that, right? With all the pieces and all. So what will you record? What information do you have to record so that uh, next time when, when we meet, we can resume the game. So you'll have to know which are the pieces that are there on the board, where these pieces, exactly which is the location of each of these pieces. And perhaps you also need to know whose turn is it next, right? So like that, if you stop the computation of the Turing machine and later want to resume, what are the information that you need? So the, there are three pieces of information that will be required. One is tape contents, right? So much like what are there in the chessboard. So this is not an exact analogy, but you get the idea, right? Tape contents, what are the, what are all these? So all these tapes will have some content. Let's say maybe the first one says one, three, let's say X, um, A, three, five, some, something like this. So we need to specify what are there in each of the tape, right? Then head position. So here in this picture, the heads are at 0.2 and maybe later it moved to 1. Here it was in 1, 2, 3, 4th position and then it moved to 5. Here it was in 2nd position and then moved to uh, 3. So, so, so whichever point the heads are, we should be able to convey, we should convey. And finally, what is the state that it is in? So state is again, I am sorry, I need to move this down. I will come to this later. Sorry. So these are state is the so these things like Q3, Q5, Q accept, Q reject. This is some uh, it is some device by which the machine remembers what it is doing. Right? It is kind of indicators for the machine. Right? So these are the configuration, tape contents, and head position. Sorry, configuration is tape contents, head position, and state. These are the three main. Uh, ingredients that the that we need to remember if we want to resume the computation and so this is like a snapshot of where the Turing machine is now right so this is what is called the configuration okay so the reason I am saying it later we will use it so this is a quick recap uh, so what is the running time Right. Again, you would have seen it. So, given a particular problem instance, how long does it take to compute? Right. So, running time, sometimes it is called time complexity. Time complexity of a Turing machine M is the function is a function from natural numbers to natural numbers where f of n is the maximum time
taken by M to to accept or reject sorry an input of length n. So basically, it is the maximum time taken. So for in uh, to accept or reject uh, an input of length n. So so we'll see examples of this. Uh, okay. So for example, uh, to to decide whether a graph is connected, let's say I'm giving you a graph. So does the graph uh, look like this? It's where everything is connected to everything else, or is the graph like this, where there are like right? So this is um, sorry. I will. Right, so the the, the 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 red graph is in two pieces. It's you cannot if you start from here, you cannot go to here. Um, whereas the blue graph is connected. So if if you start here, you can go to any other. There is a path to any other vertex. Right. So so if I ask you whether a graph is connected, this can be completed in uh, in 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 order n plus. Uh, so in some time. Right. So. So what is the time? That would be the running time. So if there is a graph on n vertices, then you can do this in order n square time, checking the connectivity. So you can you can do better. Uh, you can specify this better, but I'm not getting into vertices versus edges and so on, right? Um, so this is uh, and another important. Again, I'm just uh, these are all basic definitions, so I am not really going into the definitions. Another important. Uh, uh, notation that you and you need to, to need you to revise is the O notation, right? So we say f of n is or equal to O of g of n. If I am just giving one definition, there is also um, another definition. If limit n tends to infinity, f of n divided by g of n is a constant c, right? If the constant c is zero, then you would say it is little o of n. Okay, so maybe I will just okay. and f of n is equal to sorry, this is this is less than or equal to omega g of n. So this is used for the o g of n is used for upper bounds, and omega is used for lower bounds. Again, you would have seen these definitions, and if another important definition is if f of n is equal to O of g of n, and f of n is omega of g of n, then we say f of n is theta of g of n. Okay. So this O omega theta, these are all basic uh, definitions. So maybe we'll we'll do a very quick example. Um, an example checking if a given string is a palindrome. So palindrome is like. Uh, um, words like uh, let's say rotor, which reads the same if you go from right to left or left to right, right? So this is a palindrome. Right? So if, whether a given word, uh, given string is a palindrome is a question. So maybe another string is, for instance, one one zero zero one one. This is a palindrome, right? So if you read left to right and right to left one one zero zero one one. So this, how will a Turing machine accomplish this? Again, one thing that I didn't say here is that it starts off by having in the, the first tape contains the input and all the other tapes are usually empty or it, it starts off being empty. The first tape contains the input, the other tapes are empty and all the heads are in the leftmost position. This is the starting position of a Turing machine. So suppose we give a Turing machine 
this situation let's say the first tape contains the string which is 0 1 0 1 some something right so I, I don't know it may it may be extending and the other tape heads are other tapes are empty and all the heads start here the leftmost point now how can how can this be checked whether it is a palindrome okay right so maybe let the input string be so usually the let's say the input string be uh, w okay and w is a string which means so it could be many it could contain many symbols like binary or alphabets or whatever so i will just w1 w2 etc up to wn so these are individual symbols right so if the word is rotor then w1 is r w2 is uh, o and so on right now what you can do is copy the input to tape 2 okay and then move tape 1 head from left to right while moving tape 2 head from right to left checking each uh, while checking each uh, symbol so you see the point right so now suppose this so you so suppose this string is 101101 one, one, this is a parent row so the first tape head contains this and you are I am asking to copy this to the second tape 101101 and then you check whether this is same and this is same from left to right and then if these are the same you go to the next point whether this is the same as this and these two are the same so you continue so if it is a palindrome everything should be same right if all checks match then sorry then accept else reject so if there is some check that does not match you reject so if it's not a palindrome there should be some place where this this match fails right so this is a very simple algorithm and what is the running time of this The running time of this is uh, order n so where n so usually n again another convention is that n is the usually the length of the input the running time here is order n let us see why uh, sorry what is happening just one second i am seen i seem to have some technical ah that's okay because um, the input string is wn step one is not really a step in actually because i'm just saying something so copying the input to tape two how long does that take so you uh, you move the tape head from uh, in the tape one to left to right from left to right and while while copying the same thing from left to right uh, in the tape two so that takes if there are n uh, n n locations this also takes something like order uh, n time right n time is what it takes so usually time means the number of steps number of turing machine steps so where each step the, the computation does something like this uh, something like this okay okay so the running so first copying takes n time and then then step three you need to move the tape tape one head from left to right so while but after copying both the heads would be in the right side right so we need to move the tape one head back to the so this is this is two then another n two 
move head one back to left side right and then now head one is in the left side head two is in the right side and then you again move step by step and while matching the 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 matching the symbols that you see so this also takes order n time so or n time so this is total 3n which is which is order n right so 3n again o notation that is that what we will bother about is the is the function of n not these constants that's another way to remember the o notation again you can revise all that so this is the running time of the simple algorithm right um, so that we just make some definitions and then we will move so another definition that we will use is the d time d time of tn d time of tn okay this is a complexity class maybe the first complexity class that we are seeing in this course that contains that can be that contains all the computational problems that can be decided in time order tn so this t time tn uh, is a complexity class where tn is a function right so tn is like fn so this is a complexity class of all the computational problems that can be decided in order tn so palindrome here it took uh, order n time right so d time of n will contain the the language or the problem palindrome okay um, just another uh, point again this is an introductory lecture uh, where i'll say some basics so computational problems are sometimes called palind uh, or are, are called languages because um, every problem can be written as a string. So, for instance, palindrome, right? So, palindrome is a set of all strings, let's say in binary, let's say it's 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, some, some things like this, right? 1, 0, 1, right? So, these are all the uh, 1, 2, 3 uh, bit palindromes, I think. Um, yeah, the starting and ending have to be the same. So, and, and, and you can write like this 0, 0, 0, 0, uh, 1, 0, 0, 1 and so on, right? So, it's a, it's a set of all the strings. So, so, to determine if it is a palindrome is the same as asking whether it is a member of the set, right? So, sometimes, so, so this set is sometimes called a, a language. So, sometimes we will use the word uh, language to refer to a computational problem because if it is a yes, no question, uh, if it is a yes no the computational problem is a decision problem the yes no question then we are just simply asking whether a given string is a member of this set or not or a member of this language or not right so it's, it's a computational problem can be also thought of as a what is called a uh, a set or a language so we will use the word sometimes language to refer to a a decision problem right all the connected graphs so you can I, I give you a set of all the connected graphs. So now to determine whether a graph is connected is the same as checking whether this a given graph is in does it belong to a certain set, right? So it's it's just checking membership. So sometimes it's called language. So D time T n is a complexity class that contains all the computational problems that can be decided in order T n. So if it takes time n cube all the problems that take time n cubed or lesser again this order tn so which is an upper bound so all the problems that take time n cubed or lesser will be in d time n cubed 
okay so i think we are about half an hour so i will stop this lecture and we will continue the next lecture thank you